Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher C. and welcome to this audio summary of me reading anatomy to you. In this video we'll cover the cranial foramina, their contents, in which fossa they lie, and which bone they pass through. This is a special episode because you may need to remember the contents of a specific foramen, or you may be asked which foramen a structure passes through. Listening to this summary will cover both directions of knowledge, firstly by listing the contents of each foramen, and then taking each cranial nerve one by one and listing the foramen they pass through. Hopefully this can help you with whatever clinical or anatomical question you're going to face. Let's start with the contents of each foramina, and we'll divide this by anterior, middle and posterior cranial fossa. In the anterior cranial fossa, we have the olfactory foramen. This is in the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone and transmits the olfactory nerve, CN1. We also have the small foramen cecum, also in the frontal bone, and this transmits emissary veins to the nasal cavity. In the middle cranial fossa, we firstly have the optic canal in the sphenoid bone. This transmits the optic nerve, CN2, and the ophthalmic artery. We then have the superior orbital fissure, which is found in the sphenoid bone between the greater and the lesser wings. There are many structures here, so let's take an organized approach to remember them. There are three primary nerves, three nerve branches, and 1.5 veins. Let's start with the primary nerves. The three major nerves are three, four, and six, that is CN3, ocular motor nerve, CN4, the trochlear nerve, and CN6, the abducens nerve. We then have three branches, all of which come from the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve, V1. These are the lacrimal nerve, the frontal nerve, and the nasociliary nerve. Finally, we have 1.5 veins, that is to say the superior ophthalmic vein, and branches, but not all of them, of the inferior ophthalmic vein. Finally, don't forget, we also get the sympathetic supply through this fissure. Underneath this fissure lies the inferior orbital fissure between the sphenoid and the maxillary. This transmits the zygomatic branch of the maxillary nerve from the trigeminal, CNV2. It also transmits the remaining inferior ophthalmic veins. Next, we have three small and round foramen. They are the foramen rotundum, foramen ovale, and foramen spinosum, and all of them are in the sphenoid bone. The foramen rotundum contains the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve, CNV2. The foramen ovale contains the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve, that's V3, and the foramen spinosum contains the middle meningeal artery, as well as the vein. There are two small but often overlooked foramina which are nevertheless important and they are found in the petrous temporal bone. The hiatus for the greater petrosal nerve is a branch of the facial nerve, CN7. The hiatus for the lesser petrosal nerve is a branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve, CN9. The path of the internal carotid involves two foramen, the carotid canal in the petrous temporal bone where the artery passes through and the foramen lacerum, which the internal carotid passes over but not through. Let's move to the posterior cranial fossa. The internal acoustic meatus is found in the petrous part of the temporal bone and has four important structures. The facial nerve, CN7, the vestibular cochlear nerve, CN8, the vestibular ganglion and the labyrinthine artery. The jugular foramen spans two bones, the petrous temporal bone and the occipital bone, and it contains three major nerves, the glossopharyngeal nerve, CN9, the vagus, CN10, and the accessory nerve, CN11, that is to say, the cranial part. Finally, it contains the internal jugular vein formed by the inferior petrosal sinus and the sigmoid sinus. The hypoglossal canal lies in the occipital bone and transmits the hypoglossal nerve, CN12. 
The foramen magnum lies in the occipital bone and transmits the end of the brain stem and the beginning of the spinal cord, the vertebral arteries, and the spinal accessory nerve, CN11, as well as the meninges. Let's now reverse the direction and explain which structure goes through which foramina. In this case, is simply matching nerve or vessel to exit foramen. We'll do the cranial nerves first and then the vessels. CN1, the olfactory nerve, is via the olfactory foramen of the cribriform plate in the ethmoid bone. CN2, the optic nerve, is via the optic canal of the sphenoid bone. CN3, oculomotor, is via the superior orbital fissure of the sphenoid. CN4, the trochlear nerve, is also via the superior orbital fissure. CN5, the trigeminal, has three divisions. V1, the ophthalmic, sends its branches via the superior orbital fissure. V2, the maxillary, is via the foramen rotundum of the sphenoid. V3, the mandibular, is via the foramen ovale. CN6, the abducens nerve, is via the superior orbital fissure. CN7, the facial, is via the internal acoustic meatus. CN8, the vestibulocochlea, is also via the internal acoustic meatus. CN9, the glossopharyngeal, is via the jugular foramen. CN10, the vagus, is also via the jugular foramen. CN11, the accessory, has two parts, the cranial and the spinal. The cranial part is via the jugular foramen. The spinal part is via the foramen magnum. Cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal, has its own hypoglossal canal. Now onto the vessels. The ophthalmic artery is via the optic canal. The superior orbital veins is via the superior orbital fissure. The inferior orbital veins send branches through both the superior orbital fissure and the inferior orbital fissure. The middle meningeal artery is via the foramen spinosum, along with its vein. The labyrinthine artery is via the internal acoustic meatus. The jugular vein is via the jugular foramen, where it's formed by the inferior petrosal sinus and the sigmoid sinus. The vertebral arteries are via the foramen magnum. The special case of the carotid artery is via the carotid canal and over, but not through, the foramen lacerum. That's all. Thank you and see you next time.